The following is a legal advertisement. This does not constitute individual legal advice and should not be construed as such. This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. Hi, my name is Gwendolyn Stirk, and I'm an attorney here at Gwendolyn J. Stirk and the Family Law Group, and I'm here today with our state representative from the 37th District, Margo McDermott. So welcome, Margo, to our office. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. It's so exciting because I have to tell you that I have one of the biggest questions that clients ask. I'm explaining to them during consult or one of the attorneys is about what the law is in Illinois and we're like, these are the statutory provisions and then there might be case law interpreting it. So I'm excited today to ask you, can you tell somebody or give them an example of how legislation works and what that exactly means? I can walk you through how an idea becomes a bill and then becomes a statute. Cool. You got an example for I us? I have a great example that came right from someone who lives here in Mokina. Uh, she's been a longtime friend of mine. She's a constituent of mine and many years ago she adopted a beagle that had been used for drug research and there's a national movement afoot to make sure that when these animals are done being used for testing purposes that they're allowed to be adopted. I didn't realize until my friend came and told me about this that many of these animals are, are euthanized at the oh, end of... a shame. Isn't it outrageous? Yes. Now, sometimes they may be unwell or, or their disposition may be such that that's the right choice. But a lot of times, they would be perfect as someone's pet. So my friend asked me if I would bring a bill here in Illinois to make it the law that when dogs or cats are done being used for testing, that they be put up for adoption. So although this is a national program that for the research, then does each state have to adopt a separate statutory provision for it? Yes, but there's a national movement to get each one of the 50 states to make a rule like this. Okay, so then how does it work? So she comes to you, you're the state rep, what's the next step? Well, I have my staff write up language in a bill to the effect that uh, when the animal is done being used for research, if its disposition is good, that the researcher put the animal up for adoption. And then I file the bill in the um, clerk's office in the Illinois General Assembly. And then it gets a number. Okay. And then it's assigned to a committee. How do you choose which committee it goes to? I don't choose. The uh, Speaker of the Illinois House chooses which committee. Okay. And so in this case, it was assigned to the Higher Education Committee, surprisingly enough. Yeah, how do you get from Beagle to Higher Education? Because a lot of the research here in the state of Illinois is being done by uh, researchers at our universities. Okay, that makes sense. A little bit of a connection at least. So then it goes to committee. So you're not necessarily, just because you introduced the bill, you're not necessarily on the committee. Correct. Okay, and so then when it gets to committee, what happens? Then I go to the committee and present reasons why the committee should uh, approve the bill for discussion by the entire Illinois House. So do you do give it like a presentation? I give a presentation and okay. I bring witnesses. Wow, that's interesting. And so did your friend come with? Yes, she did. And she brought her Beagle Francis as well. Oh, that's really cool. And some people from the national organization brought a number of Beagles. And we had like pictures in front of the Illinois Capitol. And um, yes, a number of folks came and testified. So then the committee, how many people are on the committee? Well, different committees have different sizes. So it could be a general range. Uh, 7 to 15. And would it be fair to say that, you know, both partisan sides are present? Correct. And then once you gave your presentation, what happens next? Well, if the committee likes the bill, then they vote for it to be um, a approved and sent to the whole house for a vote on the floor. Okay, and then when it goes to the House, you bring the Beagle back and give a presentation again? No, no, there's no more uh, uh, testimony. What, as the person who, the sponsor of the bill, it's my job to get up and give a short presentation about the benefits of the bill, and then people can ask me questions on the floor of the House. And is that the extent of the discussion about the bill at that time? Correct. Now, you know, you hear about all these words, and people talk about adding pork to legislation. In Illinois, does that really happen, or is this just a beagle bill? Well... There can be amendments added to any bill. Okay. This isn't the kind of bill that naturally would call forth that sort of thing, but um, there are many bills where um, folks try to make amendments to either destroy the bill or to add some of their own special little um, preferences to the bill. Sure. So how long does it take it to get from the time you introduced it to the House floor? 
Oh, it can take months. The things are generally introduced in January of every year, and then we're supposed to finish our work by May 31st. How's that work out for you? Not that well in the last few years. Uh, it hasn't worked out that well, but generally we're done by uh, May 31st. Okay, so then when your Beagle Bill went to the House floor, what happened next? Well, um, the first time I brought it, uh, last year it, it never got brought up for a vote. Now this year, um, it started first in the Senate, and the Senate approved it, and we approved it later. So it was approved this year. And sometimes that's the way it is with legislation. It takes a little while to, sure. for the idea to percolate and people to get... Okay, tell me how it didn't get up for a vote. I'm curious about that. Never made it the first time through to the House? Um, that's correct. Okay. They didn't like the bill. The uh, universities made such a fuss the committee that it was never sent out. So the committee never sent it out. So that Correct. would be the determination. I just have a question. If the committee sends it out, do you always get to the House floor then? Or it always goes to the floor, but it might not necessarily get a vote. Got it. Because Got it. the speaker might not schedule it to be voted upon. Okay. And so then ultimately the bill is now passed. Then once the bill is passed, is there a long period of time between the time it gets passed and when it actually becomes effective for Illinois law? Bills generally become effective on um, the following January 1st, unless there's some special reason to make it effective earlier, which well, requires a three-fifths majority. So now it is fully passed by both houses. What if it doesn't get a three-fifths majority? Does the governor play any role in it? Well, it, it just gets, unless it needs to go into effect before January 1st, it can just be a simple majority. So that's what happened here, and it will go into effect then on January 1st. The governor did sign it. Excellent. And so that means for all of our listeners here today that they can go out and adopt a beagle that's had research that's suitable for adoption. Correct. I would contact the Beagle Freedom Group and uh, see what beagles are available. That's fantastic. So in general, would it be fair to say that this example is the normal process that would occur for legislation? Exactly. And so, you know, a lot of us remember this from government or we don't remember it from government. And then really the reality of it going on is can be much different than what we learned in school. Fair enough. There's a lot more um, behind the scenes, back and forth, uh, uh, one hand washing the other kind of thing. And would that be why things can sometimes be stalled in committee? Exactly. And tell and, us how that works. Well, take example this bill. Um, the universities are really, really, really concerned that, that what they don't want, their biggest fear is that animal testing will be completely um, forbidden in the state of Illinois. And so uh, because they were afraid that that would happen, they're willing to compromise on this bill as long as it's as animal testing is not completely forbidden in the state of Illinois. So it was a compromise that was worked out over the course of a couple years where the beagles, and, and cats also, this applies to cats as well, um, would be able to be adopted as long as um, the animal rights advocates quit advocating for all animal research in the state of Illinois by universities to be forbidden. Got it, because there is some place, some need for it to occur. In their opinion, yes. In their opinion. So that's where the compromise was finally worked out after after a couple years. So it took a little while. Right, so we're using the animals, but then we're able to adopt them ultimately right. as well. So exactly. it becomes a balance between the two of them. Well, that's real interesting because I think that the legislative process is something we forget about. So if somebody's referring to something as a statutory authority, that would refer to this bill about the beagles. Yes, it will be on the Illinois statute books on January 1st. And let's say that a judge wants to overturn or interpret that act, that would then be case law that's different from the statutory provision. Correct. And so that's interpreting. So the role of the court is to interpret the bill, while the role of the legislature is to make the bill. Correct. And so that distinction, I think, is something that we have to go back and look at. So, and one of the things we do is if the legislators want to make sure that the judges see it their way, we'll, we'll make the record on the House floor during debate of what our intentions are so that um, lawyers and judges can look at our legislative intent and the legislative history to see what we were intending. 
Well, I think that's great because I think the more that's out there makes it more helpful so that we're not relitigating or redoing what the legislature did by just trying to take one word and manipulate it one way or another. And they can look at our debate on the floor and see what they, what, what we were thinking when we made that law. That's very good. So for those of you listening, the bottom line is is that the legislation is a process through the House and the Senate, and the governor can sometimes be involved in order to get a bill passed. So it's interesting to see the distinction between the two. The proceeding was a legal advertisement from Gwendolyn J. Sturk and the Family Law Group.